evening. Thank you for joining us tonight on our intentional living. Hope you're doing well and hope you're looking forward to the Christmas season. I just remember a few weeks ago we were at Happy Thanksgiving. Now we are at Merry Christmas. Before we begin our lesson, our sermon tonight, we just want to invite you to join us now in a word of prayer. Let me mention to you several things to be praying about during this time. Of course, Number one, be praying for those who are sick. Uh, you would receive in your email a, a prayer list that we send out each week, and you can take some time to look over that and pray for those who need a special touch. Many are facing some surgeries. Many are uh, receiving some treatments. And then, of course, don't forget to pray for those families who have lost loved ones in the past few weeks. And then I was thinking today as I was praying some in my office, we need to really pray for our healthcare workers. They're on the front line every day of this pandemic. Many of our hospitals now are being overran. It's just really a tough time on them. Many of them are uh, just frustrated and, and fatigued. So I, I think it'd be right and proper tonight if we would just spend a few moments thinking about and praying for uh, those healthcare workers. And then also I was reminded earlier today in my devotion time, how the Apostle Paul reminds us to pray for those who have authority over us. And so tonight in our prayer, I'd like to include those who are government officials. If you have a special request tonight, you can drop us an email here at the church, and we'll be glad to include that on our prayer list, or just something you'd like us to pray about. Please email that to us here at the church. Would you join us as we pray? Father, we thank you for our day. We thank you for your mercy, your grace that has been extended to us. And Lord, we're undeserving of either one of those two things, but God, you freely give it to us. We thank you that that grace is sufficient for every need that we have. And we thank you that when we say, God, please have mercy, you always answer that prayer. So now, Lord, we turn our attention to those tonight who need a special touch. I think of those who are facing surgeries, those who are taking treatments, those who are sick. I ask God that your blessing would be upon them. And then again, we do pause just for a moment to pray for our health care workers. God, would you give them strength in their emotions or help them in their minds, give their body strength to overcome these tasks as they help us and help all these people try to get well. And Lord, we'll just thank you for what's done uh, during this time. We thank you for the season that we celebrate, that is Christmas, as we celebrate Jesus, who is God with us. For we pray these things in his precious name. Amen. Well, I invite you tonight to take your Bibles and turn to the book of 1 John. Uh, chapter 1. Pastor has been in a series called Authentic Christian Living, and as I was listening to his sermons over the past few weeks, I thought about that word authentic, which really means to, to be real. Uh, so tonight I want to talk to you about Jesus being real, or we could say Jesus in real life. Do you have a, a favorite story? Do you have a, a favorite, maybe, fairy tale? Uh, when you were a child, remember when someone came in to tell you a story, they would begin, once upon a time. And I think one of the, my favorite stories is Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I really like everything about Beauty and the Beast, especially Belle, she's very beautiful. And you know the story, she lives in a castle and she lives with the beast, and he was turned into a hideous beast by a fairy, and the only way to turn back into a prince is to find true love. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to help Brother Doug Phillips chaperone our seniors here at BCA, and we went down to Disney, and we were walking in one of the theme parks there, and my wife and I visited Belle's Castle, and we took a tour of Belle's Castle, and for whatever reason, the director that day picked me to escort Belle through the castle. And so as we went to room to room, I was Belle's escort. And to be honest with you, I really enjoyed it. Belle was very beautiful. And my wife said that she thought I enjoyed it uh, a little too much. 
But I just love that whole story. And then the next day we were at another park and I saw a sign that there was an outdoor drama, Beauty and the Beast. So my wife and I went and we watched the outdoor drama and the candles and the cups were in the castle and they were singing and everyone was happy. And true love was about to happen, but you know the story, Gaston comes in and stabs the beast. And so I'm sitting there with hundreds of people in Disney World and tears were running down my face. And I sort of looked around and said, boy, I hope no one saw a grown man crying over this scene. And of course, Belle embraces the beast. She kisses him and he turns into a beautiful prince. What a story, what a fairy tale and what a great ending. Well, in John chapter one tonight, I wanna to share with you some things that are not once upon a time. I wanna share with you some things that are, are not fairy tale material, but they are things that are real as we talk tonight about Jesus in real life, as we look over the Christmas season and the Christmas story. Let me read these first four, first four verses to you. In John chapter 1, the Bible says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested or made known and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard we declare unto you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. Let us pray. Father, bless the reading of your word now. May it penetrate our hearts tonight during this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to show you three things about this passage concerning Christ in real life. Number one, we see that his life is revealed. We understand that God has revealed himself to man in many ways. One of those ways is through his creation. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been out at night walking just about sunset, trying to get some exercise, and I tell you, the sky is just beautiful, and I see all of nature. And so we understand that God reveals himself to man through creation. God also reveals himself to man through his written word, the spoken word. But I do believe in this passage, and I think John is trying to clarify it for us, I think the, the most complete revelation of God to man is his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus in real life. You see, because Jesus is God's revelation of himself, he has a special name. Look back in verse 1. The Bible says he is the word of life. In John's gospel, he says it something like this. In the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus reveals to us the heart and the mind of God the Father. Look down in verse 3. He is revealed as the Son of God. Why did he come? Why did he leave his place in heaven and, and come to earth to be born of a virgin and to live a sinless life and die a substitutionary death and on the third day raise victoriously out of his grave and one day will again come to receive us into himself. Why did he do that? Well, he did that to reveal God the Father to man. He is Jesus, Emmanuel. He is God with us. Jesus said in John 14, 9, he that has seen me hath seen the Father. I hope you don't miss the Christ of Christmas this year. In John's day, there were many false teachers, and I guess we could say in our day, there would be false teachers. What are false teachers? Well, I would say to you, <clears throat> a false teacher is one who does not say who Jesus is. And many come up with uh, words about Christ. Many would say he's on the level of a prophet. Well. Obviously, he's above a prophet. Many would say he's a good teacher, and obviously he was a good teacher. Many would say he was a humanitarian of his day, and 
he went about doing good and those things aren't completely wrong or false. Many would say he was just the religious leader of his day. But according to John here, in John chapter 2, verse 22, the Bible says, He that denies Jesus is the Christ, is a liar. And so John was exposing the false prophets. Church, I want you to understand that Jesus is not on the same level as a Santa Claus. He's not an elf on a shelf. And, and I enjoy all, all those things. But Christ is, is not once upon a time. He, he is real. Look back in verse 2. 1 John chapter 1 says, He is God manifested. Manifested means revealed to us. God revealing himself to mankind. This is a wonderful Christmas story. I hope you don't miss the real life of Christmas this year because the real life of Christmas is Jesus. Not only life revealed, but we also see here, number two, life can be experienced. In John's writings here, he talks about experiencing Christ. Notice what he said in verse 2. He said, <clears throat> we saw him, we heard him, we even had the opportunity to touch him. Uh, referring here to the physical senses of sight, sound, and feel. But you see, John's writing here on, on a spiritual level as well. He wants us to experience the life of Christ as he did on a deep spiritual level. John knew Jesus personally, and he wants us to know even 20 centuries later, we too, on a spiritual level, can experience the life of Christ. 1 John 5, 1 says, Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Listen to the words of Jesus from John's gospel. It's Jesus himself said, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. What does that mean? It means to be reborn in your spirit. It means to accept, accept the Jesus that was God manifested to us. It means to put your faith, put your trust, put your confidence in Jesus. God revealed to us. It's eternal life. It is a gift from God to those who trust God's Son, Jesus. God manifested, and now Jesus as your personal Savior. I think that's the greatest gift you could ever receive during this Christmas season. I remember a song, Mary wrapped a present to the world. On that first Christmas morn when her baby was born, Mary wrapped a present to the world. What a Christmas present the life of Christ is. And what a Christmas present for those of us who have accepted him as our Savior. I want you to make this the best Christmas ever by experiencing Jesus. If you're watching tonight and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I'm, I'm going to ask you, to consider experiencing this real life we're talking about. Understand that God revealed himself to man through his son Jesus so that we could experience eternal life. But not only life revealed, not only life experience, but I want you to look at life shared. Let's look back at verse 3. <clears throat> that which we have seen and heard we declare unto you that you may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 3, John says, The life I have experienced in Jesus, I want to share it to you. John says, I want to have fellowship with you. And our fellowship is with God the Father through Christ the Lord. You know what's great about Christmas? The fact that Jesus shared his life with us. That word fellowship there. That's an interesting word. That word means to have something in common. Um, we ought to know about fellowship, especially during the Christmas season, because we get together with people we have things in common with, and we have Christmas parties. So I think you understand the word fellowship. But if you think about it, 
as sinners, man has nothing in common with a holy, righteous God. But God, in his grace, sent Jesus to have something in common with man. I hope you understand that tonight. Jesus reveals God to us. Jesus himself took upon a human body and became a man. And then he went to the cross. And on that cross took on his body the sins of the whole world. He shared his life with us. What a wonderful Christmas story. And you know what I was thinking? Here's what we should do this Christmas. As Christ has shared his life with us, we ought to share the life of Jesus with others and make their Christmas a joyous occasion. You see, Jesus shared his life with us and for us so that we could fellowship with God, so that we could have something in common with God. Would you do this for me this Christmas season? Every party that you go to, every fellowship that you go to, would you just let that thought be in the back of your mind that Jesus made it possible for me to have something in common with God the Father. Boy, what a wonderful Christmas story. And again, it's not once upon a time. It's, it's Christ in, in real life. But not just fellowship. But look in verse 4. We talk about joy. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. You see, a life shared it is a life full of joy. Christ was joy. Christ is joy. Christ had joy because he shared his life with others. You know, it's been my experience in, in my own personal life to meet a lot of, a lot of people. And I'll say this in, in love as well, but to me, the most miserable people in all the world are people who are selfish. People who are not willing to share their life with others. I can promise you that's not Jesus. He shared his life with us. And John said, I have experienced Christ. And he says in verse 4, that experience has made me full of joy. Jesus brings us peace. He brings us joy. He brings us love. And he brings us hope. And so throughout this Christmas season, we'll pass by people who are searching for peace. They're searching for joy and love and hope. And you and I, based on 1 John chapter 1, you and I as Christians have experienced those things in Christ. Jesus revealed the Father to us. Here's what the psalmist David said, in the presence of God, there is true joy. I wanna ask you tonight, do you have the true joy of Christmas? Have you experienced Jesus? Has God been made known to you through his son, Jesus? I read a story this week, and we'll conclude with this. It said a pastor stood before his congregation one Christmas morning as he prepared the Christmas morning message and the Christmas morning service. A big church, over 1,000 people present that day, and upon entering the church, each person received a balloon full of helium. And on that balloon, the pastor had written this message. At the moment in this service, your heart is overwhelmed by the joy of Christmas. Please release your balloon. And so as the pastor was preaching, as the music was being played, and as they were singing songs, and as they were saying prayers, as they were taking communion, the pastor said balloons began to be released all throughout the congregation. But he said to his surprise when he gave the benediction and he said amen, he looked up and to his surprise, he said over 20% of the people in his congregation were still holding on to their balloons. And so during that Christmas service had not experienced the true joy of Christmas. How about us this year? How about you? Have you experienced the, the joy of, of knowing Christ? Have you experienced the joy of knowing that Jesus is God made known to us? 
He is Emmanuel, God with us. I hope you'll experience that during these days as we celebrate Christmas. And then I want to ask you this. Will you share his life with others this Christmas season and experience the fellowship and joy? And I will challenge you today and during this Christmas season to release your balloon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for Jesus that Father is, is you revealed to us. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you tonight that you were willing to make all this possible for us, even to the death on the cross, so that we might have forgiveness of sins. Would you help us during these days of Christmas? Would you help us to worship in spirit and in truth and give us the joy and peace that passeth all understanding? And we'll thank you for what's done. For we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.